Man, I've been watching Succession lately, and that show is banging. Canadian Computer Collector here, and this week we're going to be doing a haul video, or sort of a running over of all of my recent acquisitions, things that I've acquired from about January 2022 to now. There's one or two items that I got before that that never sort of made their way on camera, and there's a couple items here that have been on camera. Anyway, the whole point of this video is to go through this stuff, test it out as much as we can, not all of it's gonna work, uh, and then see what exactly we got ourselves into. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, a regular guy who likes, you know, uh, hanging out and drinking water. Another big thing that we haven't done much with on this channel yet is Commodore, uh, or our Commodores. Other big things that we haven't done on this channel include Commodores. How do you even talk? I don't know. English is a horrible language. There's just no rules to it. I'm glad I was born into it, because holy crap, this language is miserable uh, to try and learn. Look at Spanish. Ev you, you say every letter. Every language should be like Spanish. Not important. Anyway, what, what we're talking about today is computers. So let's just dive into it, shall we? Woo! So it's funny, actually, what happened when I did the little dive thing is I hit my butt on the table behind me, but it didn't make a sound, so I didn't include it because I didn't want people to think I was faking. Anyway, I'm gonna do another voiceover. First machine on the list, we're looking at the LC2 and Style Writer in the box. Now, I have an unboxing video for these machines, so I'm not gonna actually get into them in depth here. Um, you may also remember if you've seen that video that this one had a capacitor problem where they were drowning in electrolytic fluid um, and kind of singing, if you will. So if you don't remember that, here's a clip. So next up, we've got an Apple IIe color monitor box. Now this is box only. This is another purchase from the uh, local eBayer in town. As you can see, there is unfortunately no foam inside the box, but that's okay because the flaps are clean. I thought that I had a color monitor to go in here after putting it next to the monitor. Turns out that I don't. Um, I have a monochrome. Anyway, up next we got a G4 tower. This puppy is looking nice and clean. I actually purchased this from another local collector uh, as opposed to a reseller. Uh, like the last item. Now this one has a few parts that have been swapped out, so it's not completely uh, original manufacturer. Um, and you don't get the boot chime or any of the uh, uh, fun and exciting startup loading bars, but it does work. So, you know, there's a shot of the video card <laughs> in case you were hoping there would be one. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna plug in a monitor and give this thing a keyboard and mouse and just prove that it does in fact boot. Uh, and I think I had issues with the monitor, but yeah, there it is. So as you can see, we got power, we're happy, shut her down, and on to the next. Coming up next, we've got the Performa 6400-200. This is another item that came from that same local collector. And while it does look like it's seen better days on the outside, not that it's devastated or anything, but it's a little dirty, there are actually quite a few cards inside this machine, a lot of different media cards. Uh, very exciting. I'm really interested to pull this thing apart and have a better look at it. Um, probably needs some cleanup, but it runs really well. So let's just quickly take a look at the logic board and then test this sucker out. So as you can see, there's barely even enough room to breathe in there. You could drown in all those cards uh, if you wanted to. Uh, <laughs> very exciting stuff here. Um, so logic board goes back into the case. We flip her around, pop out a keyboard and mouse, bust out the monitor again, and let's test this sucker. And you know me, I like to test suckers, whether that's on the street or in the studio. Talking about. Anyway, uh, yeah, so as you can see, computer works. Nice little gun hand, nice little face. Oof. And we can pull this thing out put the monitor under the table and we bought our next machine, which is a lovely Windows 98 tower that I bought from a man who looked like the cigarettes that he has smoked all his life. This machine smells terrible. And when you turn it on, it fills the room with nicotine dust. Kind of smells like a grandfather. 
Very cool looking case. I haven't seen one like this before. I imagine it's supposed to have kind of like a, a jet feel to it. Uh, but you know, it ran Jazz Jackrabbit just fine. So no complaints there. Anyway, Windows 98, very exciting. We're gonna put all that stuff away and make room for the 512K. So this machine has appeared on a live stream before and uh, we know that it turns on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on for an example. I haven't done anything with this one, but it, it was a pretty recent acquisition. This is one of the examples that uh, you may have already seen before if you already like the channel and subscribe to the videos. If you haven't, why not try it out? It's free to subscribe, and if you like the videos, I will send you uh, positive mental thoughts. Next up, we've got an iMac that uh, my mom actually had for a period of time. So this is a little um, dual core machine, nice and peppy. Uh, very dirty, needs to be cleaned, and the keyboard is missing an enter key on its numpad side, but what do you do? Nice little machine, and with a couple upgrades, this one will be faster than your grandpa try to exit an adult content on <laughs> his computer when you walk in the room. Alright, let's get rid of that iMac, and we've got a couple 20SC drives. Now these I picked up uh, after a local guy reached out to me after seeing a few of my videos. Um, got a great deal on these and uh, you know I haven't tested them out yet but it looks like they came from a school division. Usually school divisions would take you know a hot iron and, and mash a serial number into it like you saw earlier. <clears throat> Otherwise great shape though. Up next we got the uh, Macintosh 2CX. This came from the same guy that sold me the 2E color monitor box. Uh, the eBay reseller that lives here locally. Great looking machine, pretty clean under the hood. There's a couple capacitors that look pretty bad, like this one. And then there's a shot where I kind of almost do a drive by right in the bottom right there. Uh, big old flood of fluid. So that one needs to be cleaned up and recapped, something that I'd like to do on a live stream fairly soon. Now that I've got the skills to uh, not necessarily pay the bills. Okay, coming up next, we've got a uh, few dramatic hand movements and what looks to be a 6200 CD. I say that because I'm already working on one right now and this is pretty much identical. Uh, I bought this to be a parts machine. I think I paid like 13 bucks for it. Same guy who sold me the 2CX and the 2E color monitor box. Uh, this was part of a big collection that I think they're just kind of getting to the tail end of. I ended up cutting myself when I pulled the logic board out there. So, you know, user beware, working on old computers. Might need a tetanus shot or else you'll be finding yourself heading to the hospital faster than grandpa trying to close adult content because <laughs> you just walked into the room. Anyway, up next we got some Hot Wheels speakers. A gentleman that I bought these from sold them to me for five bucks and said that they don't necessarily work all the time. There's a little bit of a flickering noise when you're turning up the volume. So probably just needs to be resoldered, uh, but we'll take a look. We'll pull these things apart. Maybe we'll do that on another live stream. You know, we'll pull these things apart uh, faster than grandpa. <laughs> just doing what he loves. All right, up next we've got a 2010 or a 2009 MacBook. Uh, this one didn't start even with power, big face there. Uh, so this one just went back on the shelf. This is gonna be something that either I repair or throw on eBay. Here's a cool little cassette recorder that I picked up off of eBay. Uh, I just thought it was neat, it was cheap. It's an Audiotronics Classet, uh, a one, what is this? A Classet 152S-2. Now. Uh, very kind of funky, late 70s, early 80s vibe to it. I don't know if I'll ever do anything with this thing, but I think it's pretty neat. I do have a box of my dad's old cassettes I could test it with. Here's the HP Elite Desk Mini I got from my work. This also came with a laptop um, that had pretty similar specs. It's a quad-core i5 with uh, 8 gigs of RAM and a small solid-state drive. Now, this thing was part of the program that we have at work where employees can take home old machines, and that's exactly what I did. Got a couple keyboards here. Uh, this keyboard and mouse on the right. The newer Apple one uh, with the white keyboard and mouse. That one is the one that came with my mom's iMac and is missing the enter key. The other one on the left came with the 6400-200. And that one's in better shape at least than the white one here. This one's also got some yellowing to it, so. Not perfect, but they're not bad. 
Always good to have a few more boards in the house. So here's a few iPads. Uh, we got a pencil, an iPad Pro, an iPad, and an iPad. So the two iPads are older. Um, this is the iPad Pro with the pencil. It just has cracked glass, but it does still work. It has a charge, and uh, the previous owner wiped it before I picked it up. This is a sort of round-backed, older iPad. This one's got cracked glass as well, and I do believe that it works. Just needs a replacement. Something I'm kind of not sure if I'm gonna do yet. I've thought about it, uh, and it is something that interests me, but I know that these micro, micro electronics are somewhat frustrating to work with. And then this last iPad came from an old teacher of mine. This is a very small one, kind of like, you know, a glorified Galaxy Note. And uh, that one's got cracked glass and also can't be logged into because the crap runs over some of the keyboard keys. Anyway, on to Commodore land, we've got a early VIC-20 with the dual prong charge port. Uh, up next, we got another VIC-20. This one's kind of a little more standard with the uh, regular power cord that people are used to. This one I purchased off of a local uh, Kijiji app. Uh, for those uninitiated, it's a bit like Craigslist. This one was a great deal. Um, and you know what, I, I haven't turned on or tested any of these yet because we learned on the live stream last week that sometimes the power supplies uh, can deliver a hit to these, these old machines that will just put them right out of business. So I would be purchasing a new modern uh, power supply that can be used for the VIC-20 and the 64. The only problem is, can't be used on the connector that you see here. This is the dual prong. So I'll have to find a solution for that over time. Either way, these need to be cleaned up and tested and uh, further explored, which we will be doing soon in a video coming up in the future. <clears throat> coming in the future, that's what your grandpa said when he was <laughs> looking at that whole content. Anyway, uh, on to the Commodore 64s. So this one's really cool. This is what I like to think of is probably like the home uh, version targeted at families or people that would be buying this in a retail store. The box art just has more of a whimsical feel to it, kind of sells that fantasy adventure idea that picking up a computer can give you. Think of all the mystical lands you can travel to with this beige keyboard. Now, if we pull this one out of the box, you can see that it's not in bad shape. It's just yellowed pretty severely on the top. Like you can see a distinct difference between the bottom case and the top case. It also has a pretty fancy spider web on it. Uh, but there's a bit of a closer look, sped up to 250 times, so, <laughs> or 250%. So here's a close up on the cobweb. As you can see, it's a well-structured web, much like the interweb. Here's a 64 and a VIC-20 for a little side-by-side -side action. And then what's this guy doing? Yeah, whose bank account is that, Fred? All right, Commodore 64 goes back into the box and here's another Commodore 64. Oddly enough, the exact same machine. However, with a more corporate flair to the packaging. This one features employees standing around the machine putting up weird graphs and what looks like possibly, you know, screen test patterns. Uh, you know, here's a chart. One that you too can replicate with your Commodore 64 microcomputer. It's high resolution and a sound synthesizer. Anyway, mostly standard fare inside the box. More of that beautifully stamped uh, logo packaging. And then inside here is just like a, a bunch of crap that I bought for $25. It's mostly software, a few joysticks, and a uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive for $25, as you can see. Pick that up at a local antique shop. Talking about finding deals all over the town, and no, it wasn't my dad's antique shop. Anyway, here's a close up on some of this stuff. We've got cartridges, we've got five and a quarter inch floppies, we got Jumpman Jr., we got Radar Rat Race and Avenger, and what is this? Turtle Jump, and uh, what is this? A blank disc, I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> Dyson, not the vacuums. We've got Spy Hunter Baseball, Buck Rogers, QFT Boot. Here are the joysticks you would use in those cases. My chair is making quite a bit of noise, so I apologize for the creaking. Uh, we got Double Dragon, Fantastic Four, Face Maker. Lots of fun stuff to test out once I get these Commodores up and running. Which, you know, I hope is fairly soon. So stay tuned. Yeah, so time to get rid of all this Commodore stuff. Uh, not literally, I'm just going to put it behind the iMac here. And uh, we're on... <laughs> 
onto some software. This is Hot Wheels Custom Car Designer, which is not great at standing up on its own. This is a game that I had as a child, and I remember getting it. I was stoked about the VW bus. I remember at the time the actual pattern VW bus was quite a rare Hot Wheel, and getting a blank white one I thought was really cool. I didn't end up doing any of the decals or any of the uh, you know water transfers or anything, or stickers or what have you, but you know I remembered playing the game and it was pretty fun. It was kind of like a basic print shop just with Hot Wheels themed stuff. Here's a Palm Pilot that a buddy of mine sent my way. Um, and you know, an original M105 with a few different cases. On the box, it says it comes with all these different colors. I don't know if maybe it did at the time. Inside this one, it only had the dark blue and like a couple wood grains. The one thing that really surprised me was how light it felt. Like, I don't want to say this thing felt cheap, but it felt cheap, you know? Like it felt like there wasn't much in there, you know? Beyond the batteries that you had, it was basically just like a little piece of plastic more or less like a glorified electronic football game or something there's a few of the other shells but yeah that's about it well everybody that's about it for uh things i've acquired over the last three months um it seems like a lot but you got to remember that stretched over a period of probably 100 days if you include a little bit of april lots of neat stuff to play with lots of stuff to fix lots of things that i need to retro bright which i have uv lights on the way in the mail uh, for me to use for that process. So we're gonna be doing some full full restorations if you combine the soldering skills that I learned on the live stream from last weekend um, Or maybe two weekends ago. It depends on when this video comes out. Anyway, I'm really excited. We're gonna be fixing things. We're gonna be you know Fixing things. Anyway, thanks again for watching. If you made it to the end, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and also please tell other people about this channel. That's the most important thing you can do. Uh, links in the description to different ways you can support the channel. We're talking Patreon, we're talking Buy Me a Coffee, social media. Just hit 200 followers on Instagram, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> without further ado, I will shout out the Patreons and then we'll call it a day. So thank you so much once again to Trina Conrad, uh, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Ethan Palomero, Mac84, Ron Resnick, and Garth Beagle, my homeboy. And here we are a few days later, and I can't forget our new patrons who have subscribed since I recorded the video, which would be Group Ride, Adam, and Jason. So thank you so much to all of you, especially Jason, who came in at $5 a month. Thank you, Jason. Where do I look? Where's the camera? Here. Thank you, Jason. Anyway, for a dollar a month, you can get your name in the credits and endless shout outs for Canadian Computer Collector videos. I appreciate everything that you folks do. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.